Thank you. All right, here we are again. We are the Vinyl Community Gunkles, here to discuss the tops and bottoms of 2010. What a year. Well, we'll find out, I guess, because we'll each give you our opinions of what the best and worst music of that year was. We are the Vinyl Community Gunkles. I am Robert Fithin, along with Mike from Hubtoons, Craig from Craig's Vinyl Plethora, and ladies and gentlemen, the man that's going to give us a list of the wonderful events that happened in 2010 uh, before telling us his uh, favorite music. It's Richard from Calvin Wazoo. Well, I don't know if they're wonderful events, but uh, there were some events, such as on February 12th, Swedish guitarist Jesper Stromblatt Quit in Flames. And by the way, In Flames is the name of the band. Oh. Uh, so, <laughs> on April 1st, no fool about this. Care about that. That's when uh, Justin Bieber's uh, debut album came out. And uh, it was number one on the Billboard 200. And uh, after the release of his latter debut studio album, My World 2.0. So at the age of 16, that made him the youngest solo male act to top the chart since 1963 when Stevie Wonder did it with 12-year-old Genius. And he was the first artist to occupy two uh, top five spots on the chart since Nelly in 2004. So Bieber really made a bang when he uh, debuted that album. He also became the second youngest artist overall to achieve number one, uh, only being beaten out by a 15-year-old Miley Cyrus in 2008. Dear God. Good old Bieber. So May 21st, Tame so, Impala, uh, the Australian psychedelic act that uh, was uh, created by Kevin Parker, they, uh, or it, debuts with the album Inner Speaker, album I don't have, um, although I have listened to some Tame Impala and I would like to get some more in my collection. Um, August 4th, <clears throat> Taylor Swift has this uh, lead single, Mine, It Leaks, and later Big Machine Record releases it on iTunes and becomes number one only after five hours. So it is the set the record for the fastest climbing song to number one. So Taylor Swift. <laughs> I didn't know was, they timed it. <laughs> that seems like you know. Ridiculous. You know, it's almost like baseball in a way with all these <laughs> weird, you know, statistics that they come up with in regards to music. Um, all right. So September 12th, it, here's this is another kind of a long one. Lady Gaga sweeps the music, uh, the uh, Video Music Awards. She wins eight awards, seven for just bad romance alone for that video and best collaboration for her song telephone with beyonce so in actually the i have the little monsters compilation which i i really like that uh that release and her later stuff i've really never paid much attention to um she yeah. get that was also the year if you remember she gave her acceptance speech in that dress meat made dress. out of meat yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, in her meat dress, yeah. Yes. That was pretty glorious. Yes. Oh, boy. Yes. Uh, she, she was, was nominated edge for of glory. Yes. She was, yeah. She the was edge rare. of glory. Yeah. She was, she was rare. Mm. Um, Lady Gaga was also nominated for 13 VMA awards, the most in the show's history. So there was just a lot of this type of, I mean, you've got Justin Bieber, you've got Lady Gaga, you can kind of see what was going on already in a way with uh, 2010. Um, also, Justin Bieber that year uh, won the award for Best New Artist, becoming the youngest ever. You're, to win you're giving Bieber. me Bieber fever. That's right. Okay. Um, in October, 
Yeah, remember Psy? Greg ain't having it. <laughs> <laughs> remember the uh, South Korean pop star Psy? Well, yeah. October twentieth, he releases yeah. the album Psy Five, and that's the only album of his that was not released worldwide on iTunes. So I don't know what's on it because yeah. I didn't never listen to it. Me uh, but the best part That's about the Gangnam year album. or any Psy album. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of right. 2010 though, hey, this was the year. <laughs> Gangnam Style. Yeah, all right. Anyway, uh, the best part of 2010 for me was the fact that that was the year the car seat headrest was formed. Oh and um, Will Toledo released oh. the numbered albums. Uh, which weren't all that good, but uh, that's when the you know he hit the scene. So those are the news events of uh, 2010. Now my no one died. Why do you encourage? I that? didn't go through. Oh, all there right. were there's plenty of deaths. Somebody died. Sure, but... but... Could have filled hey, in some I didn't. Death I didn't look that up. And in flames, whatever. Mike. Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, when it comes to albums, I have, uh, I'm going to, these are pretty much in order of ascending order. So, I'm starting with the weakest one. I don't have honorable mentions. I just have, I don't have a lot of albums from 2010. And when I was going through all the different releases, there weren't a lot of albums that were released in 2010 that I really was interested in. Yeah. Um, it just, yeah, it, but there were some good ones and one of them we reviewed and, uh, so, uh, my bottom honorable mention or whatever, oh, yeah. you know, the Greenhorns, we, uh, the album four stars, which I think I gave three stars to. I remember but, that. Yeah. yeah. Me too. I remember that it's, cover. it's not yeah. a bad album, but you know, I remember what it sounds like. <laughs> it's, it's not a great album. But, um, you know, they're a band from, I think they're from Cincinnati. Um, and so, uh, nice cover, though. I yeah. Mean, it's a very cool cover. Very cool, you know, color variant. Um, and then this was not their best album, but I like this album. I have it on CD. I don't have it on vinyl. But Scissor Sister came out with Nightwork. So, uh, uh, which it's a pretty decent album. Uh, it's not bad, um, but you know, it's not like their earlier material. That was their um, last one, I think. Pardon me. They had one more. Oh, there might have been one after that, but I... yeah, there was one more after this one. Okay. Um, which... But the, is 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 this the one with? Um, oh no, this isn't the one with Kiki on it. Um, but uh, I did see them here in Chicago when they were touring this uh, album, and it was a very good show. Uh, yeah, in fact, I saw them. I saw them twice here in Chicago: once at uh, the Riviera, and then once at the Vic. Um, another release that I have on CD, not on vinyl, but uh, Gorillas, and that is Plastic Beach. Pretty good album. I really like this. I would like to get it. And there's got you know all kinds of fantastic you know, artwork that they that they go with typically with the uh, gorillas releases. Um, so very very interesting project all the way around in terms of its concept and its presentation. And they came to Chicago a couple times with the the act came to Chicago a couple of times, but I didn't go see them because it was at the United Center. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's not really a nice place to see a show. No. Um, then we have uh, Anthony and the Johnsons. Yeah. This is an EP. Thank you for your love. Uh, Anthony is now goes by the name of, uh, Anone, uh, and and now is uh, she's fully em embraced, uh, being referred to as she, and it's 
I don't know. It, so it, her voice is, I really like it. It's very expressive, a yeah. little warbly, but I can see where maybe some people might not take to it. But I find her to be such a remarkable singer. Uh, and she does a really nice uh, cover of Imagine on this record. Um, but, uh, but the original songs are, are definitely so much better. Um, the next one is, uh, interestingly, uh, this is Spoon, Transference. That which was, is not a well necessarily a well liked album yeah. uh, in the spoon catalog, but I really favorite. like. It. I really like what they were doing with this album, and it is the first one. And I will admit, I bought it because of the cover, because of this you know this cute guy sitting in this chair. But I love the way the fact he's sitting in this like granny chair, you know, kind of like. How many times have you been in that kind of a situation where you're you're sitting in a chair with a bunch of other probably older people, you know, and you're younger, and you're you know you're like this, you know, it's kind of like ah, you know, and and you know that's that's what I see what's going on here, you know, in in some respects oh. with that with <laughs> that photo, um, although you could also say that he's sitting in a bordello. Um, yeah, that's always what I thought. Yeah, you're sitting like that, you're probably getting blown yeah. or something. Well, oh, yeah. not yet. Uh. <laughs> um, then we have uh, The Black Keys uh, with Brothers was released. I like The Black Keys. I like The White Stripes. I like them both. Um, and I do like uh, this particular record. It was the first one I ever heard. Yeah. I, I was um, in a... Um, coffee shop during the day it was a coffee shop at night it was a bar um and they were playing uh, this on the sound system and i was like oh my god who is this and the guy was looking at me like what the fuck man you don't even know who this is uh because i didn't and and uh because it was like an old record by the time i had heard it uh but i i do like the black keys and brothers I think Rubber Factory is probably my favorite of the Black Keys. Yeah, mine too. Um, but, yeah, but Brothers is is a good one. Um, also released, another Master Musicians of Bukake. Uh, Bukake. This is Totem 2. Oh, we Bukake. Totem 3. Um, and this is Totem oh. 2, which is on some very nice red oh. vinyl. Um similar kind of concept to the album um and uh i finally found a u.s vendor who was selling totem one i have that on order so oh, i'll cool. be getting uh that fairly soon as well in black vinyl the the color variants are not available at this time um but i would definitely have one in purple i would love to get the, the purple variant None in white Ah uh, no, no, they didn't. They didn't think of that. I think. White you know, splatter, went, you know? Yeah, a white <laughs> splatter. Yeah, they they didn't, they didn't yeah, think of, I, think of yeah. that. White splatter bukake. Um, I don't know. Did they play already in Chicago, or are they coming up? Uh, they played. I think. Yeah, Budo's fan. They, they were at the Salt Shed. They did like three huh. or four nights. Yeah, I was surprised yeah, by that. And I, totally didn't, I didn't out. go because I was unable yeah. to. But man, no this is some serious kick ass funk, man. Yeah, they're some a fun band. Serious saxophones going on. Oh my God. This is this is really good. It's just old school funk. It's great. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. They're they're uh, they're a blast. They got a Barry Sax player that man, he makes that horn hog. Um, and then uh, the uh, other one I have, uh, and I think this is close to the best release so far. And there's quite a few releases, but Villagers right. with Becoming a Jackal. What a, this was my first album listening to the Villagers. It's such a remarkable album. Uh, 
just remarkable songs on here, kind of a indie folk style. Um, Connor O'Brien, I believe is his name. Yeah. Um, and amazing songwriter. For most of his recordings, he plays all the instruments. Um, and they're called, it's called Villagers because that's what his traveling band is. Live performance band is, is named as Villagers. So uh, he has other people playing with him when he does uh, live live gigs. They have uh, a new album coming out. Yes, too. they do. Yeah. And I picked it up and I'll be... Uh, oh, it's already out? Yeah. It's, right. um, and, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's really... Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I got to listen to it some more. I like them. But there you go. Those are my, uh, my the albums I have from 2010. And they're also albums I all really like. Green Horns, you know, eh, you know, a little shaky on that one. But all the other ones I really like. All right, it's Craig's turn. Do you have singles? I have singles. I've got... Um... Five honorable mentions and a top 15. I know. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> I made it work. All right. So uh, for my first honorable mention, that would be John Legend did an album with The Roots uh, called oh, Wake yeah. Up. And and the first single off of that was Wake Up Everybody featuring That's a good Common album. and Melanie. It's really good. And their cover of um, Arcade Fire's Wake Up is brilliant. Uh, but this song features Common and Melanie Fiona. And Melanie Fiona is a voice that I think more people need to be aware of because she's quite brilliant. Uh, also on my honorable mentions, the Black Keys with Tighten Up. Uh, this is a band that I really, really loved when they came out. I loved their first record. Uh, this was their second single. The song I really, really liked came out the year prior because that's when the record came out. But Two Door Cinema Club with Undercover Martin. Lead singer is a ginger. He's quite cute. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, just this is bad, but oh, this is bad. That's funny. But Ludacris, Luda, featuring Nicki Minaj, who I cannot stand. But my chick bad, my chick good, my chick thing oh that song just gets me and my last honorable mention would be the naked and famous with young blood and oh my god i love that record and i was like are they oh, still around if i could find it um they haven't done anything for a while but i think they've only released like three maybe three? four records but yeah. yeah i actually looked at passive me aggressive you because i'm like oh i want to get that album Oh my Jesus Lord, it's like $350. I almost wow. bought it when it came out. And yeah, I didn't. But anyways, okay, so number 15. Uh maybe your comeback album. It was called Pulse, but Tony Braxton released a single called Hands Tied. And I can love you, love you with my hands tied. Oh, she get nasty. Uh, but in a good way in a Christian way. Uh, number 14 would be Tiesto featuring Tegan and Sarah. Feel it in my bones. Good little dance flavor there. Uh, number 13 would be Janelle Monet featuring Big Boy with Tightrope. Yeah. yeah. Number 12, I have a visual for this great one. Um, yeah, I love her. She's so great. She's great. Uh, she number 12. Huh? Nothing. I what no, I, I adore her. I, she, she's actually, I was going to choose her album for my next album review. Not, oh. not this, not this one. I was going to do a dirty computer. I love that record. Oh, that, that one's good. Yeah, she's oh, so good. Print. Okay. We're getting off topic here. That's All right. <laughs> Number 12. Uh, so this was a uh, first album since 1998. But the first album featuring both original vocalists. Um, so Andy had done three records in the 90, and then in 2010, they released their first record, Andy and Paul finally together. I'm talking about OMD Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark yeah. with If You Want It was the first single off of that record. I love that record. <laughs> it is so good. History of Modern. Yeah. So good. And it's yeah, so underrated. Yeah. So there were three records. 
It's out of they've done the four. Yeah, they've done four since they got since Paul and um, Andy got back together, and I think that's probably my favorite out of the four. Mm -hmm. The new one's pretty good, but yeah, that's really good. Um, number eleven. Oh, so good. Gossip with men in love. Ma na na na. Men in love with each other. Uh, so off of music for men. Yep. Let's see. Um, number ten would be Neon Trees with Animal, and that was their first single. Neon Trees also only did like three records and then disappeared. Yeah. Um, Tyler Glenn did do a solo record called Excommunication because um, he's a gay Mormon guy like me. So, you know, me and him are best friends. I'm 10 years older than him, though. Whatever. Number nine, uh, Kids of 88. They only had one record. And their first single was Just a Little Bit. And it's so good. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Neon Tree style. Not ooh, ah, just a little bit, Gina G. No. <laughs> just a little bit of what you need. Number eight would be Martin Solvig, Sol Solvig, so I don't know how you say his name, featuring Dragon Nat with Hello. I just came to say hello. I featuring dragon nuts, <laughs> dragon net. Oh, oh, oh. not I dragon nuts, dragon net. Su summertime gets about 110 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> Leave me dragon on the sidewalk. <laughs> How's it hanging? It's, uh, good, it's, it's hard, pretty yeah. impressive right now. It's like 105 degrees outside, anyway. So number seven, uh, it was. I'm yeah. I'm just. I'm just ignoring y'all because I'm trying to get through my GD <laughs> list here. Okay. No, you're not. Number seven. I love this song. This was the fun. This, this was the last album. I don't know why it's as a band because it really the only original member as lead singer. But number seven would be Hole with Skinny Little Little Bitch. And yes, I have Nobody's Daughter on vinyl. And this is quite pricey now, but yeah, yeah skinny would... little bitch. I love that skinny little bitch. Ugh. You know better than to fuck with me, she says, because that Courtney, oh. she's a bit, but I'm pretty sure she's the only member from Hold that's on that record. So I think it's a completely different band. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe it was actually originally going to be like her second, like her second uh, solo <laughs> record. And then for some reason she released it under whole because I have a like elite version of it that was just under her name. Um, and number six would be Hanson. Yes, they released a single that year with Think About Something. I've been thinking about something other than you. Yes. Uh, so first time in 10 years and it's the last time we've seen them. Uh, so from 2010, same name of the album, same song, single, Sade with Soldier of Love. And we have not, there's been two singles off of soundtracks since then. But other than that, they have been silent. I need, I need, I need. Okay. Uh, number four would be Kylie Minogue with All the Lovers. Uh, that video is brilliant. It's like all these people come out like naked. Well, they have like their undergarments on and they all like make this tower, like triangle thing, whatever. And at the top of this people tower is Kylie and all her glory. It's so wonderful. At uh, number three, I think a very underrated single, a single singer. And um, she had a band with her. Now she's just solo, but Grace Potter and the Nocturnals with Paris ooh la la. She's so terrific. Good. I love Grace yeah. Potter. Yeah. She's again, I feel very underrated. Um, number two would be RK Fire with the month of May. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut a record in the month of May. And my number one favorite single of 2010 would be Robin. This is her body talk. This is another rare with Hang with me. And you think you can hang 
with me. And there you have it. And I, you guys probably did not know most of that. But no, and I was actually I'm thinking about for. doing singles for this year uh, because this was the one of the years that this was, you know, peak year for going out to clubs for me and just uh, that club music playing all the time. So a lot of it brings back great memories. I had about a five or six year run of that, but this is one of the peak years for that. And I just remember all those songs like uh, Rihanna had a bunch and... Uh, Pink had a lot. Kesha was mm -hmm. really big. Uh, Bruno Mars, I think he was, it was kind of early for him. Uh, Enrique yeah. Iglesias had a bunch of stuff. And I thought Craig would mention all those, so I didn't do singles. And he didn't mention any of them. <laughs> I almost mentioned Bruno Mars. I Gren, Grenade almost made it on my list. Yeah, Grenade um. sucks, though. I, that's why I said it was too early for Bruno Mars. I, I, I like the later Bruno Mars, but... Um, Rihanna definitely had a bunch, and, uh, you know, Kesha, like I said, uh, it was just uh, all those songs. Well, and just, Pink uh, had back fucking a lot of perfect. A lot of alcohol flowing, as well as some other fluids, just nonstop. Well, I wouldn't call the other fluid, oh, I guess it wasn't Jesus flowing, Lord. but it was... <laughs> or nonstop. More like blast. No, but I decided I mean, instead to been, do... You uh, never know. Yeah, flowing gives the idea that people were getting urinated on, but that's not what was happening at where I was. <laughs> this was not a golden shower. No. So I decided to, because uh, I don't know anything about 2010 other than the club songs, and I'm not going to listen to a bunch of albums from 2010 because they're probably all horrible. Uh, so I did something different because we can do a top uh, list about anything. I don't know if we remember the rules or not, but you could do anything. There are no rules. I've got top 12 album artwork of 2010. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. That's Starting with number 12. It, it is the uh, stoner rock band from Germany called Sun Grazer. There's their uh, artwork for their self-titled album. And, of course, I will put up the actual JPEG so they're much clearer. Uh, you've got the uh, psychedelic band. Um, the Time and Space Machine was set phaser to sun. There's the album oh, cool. artwork for that. At uh, okay, number 10, okay. we have got uh, Death Metal, always putting out, usually putting out some nice uh, artwork uh, in that uh, category. There's, you know, uh, Paradogma and Hour of Penance. You've got the artwork for that. Uh, oh, number fancy. 9 is uh, aforementioned Tame Impala with Inner Speaker. There's yeah, the, the cool cover. Artwork for that with the clouds kind of doing their weird thing Dude. there. Number eight is uh, uh, indie rock from uh, Jan Tiersen, Dust Lane. Just a cool shot of like a car in the uh, woods oh. and kind of a red tent on that. I've seen that before. Oh, that's uh, We've got some uh, electronica at number seven. Casino versus Japan uh, with Night on Tape. I don't know what Casino versus Japan is, but maybe I'll check some of these out because usually I stuff I like this, that. it all depends on how cool the album cover looks. More electronic music from Luke Abbott and uh, Hold'em Drones coming in there. That's a neat looking cover. Uh, we got number five, mm -hmm. uh, Julieta Venegas, I guess is how you say that. And the album is called um, Otra Casa. It's uh, Latino music, but I thought that was a really cool cover. Yeah. Again, I will have these in a um, JPEG so they're nice and clear for the audience to see. Uh, you, at, a band just called F with a lot of uh, electronic music, dubstep, energy distortion. Just a lot of pink and purple lines and blue lines. I <laughs> thought that was nice. Uh, Steve Moore <laughs> with primitive, primitive uh, neutral pathways. You've got uh, more electronic music there. I've seen that, yeah. I don't know if that's like an infant in there or what that is, but or not an infant, a uh, uh, fetus. Something. Klaxon surfing yes. the void. Ooh, uh, here's some indie rock and love that cover. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, this is going to be. I'm, I've got a project I'm going to be starting, and that might be a part of it. And then the number one artwork uh, of 2010 comes from a band who I actually know. Uh, they're called Metal. They're not metal. Uh, they are Ghost and uh, Opus Eponymous. Yeah, that's uh, in their 2010 release from Ghost always has great album covers. So those are my favorite uh, album covers of they 2010. Around, yeah, I have not heard any of them, including that particular Ghost album. So there you are. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and I did look through 2,500 album covers. I didn't just half-ass. Oh my them. god! You got a lot of time on your hands. 
No, I mean, I just don't have a lot of time. Wow, you go. It was pretty quick. <laughs> okay, so, uh, wow, t- 20, 2010 seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? It was 14 years. <laughs> Ten, you know, it really does. 11 years, years away ago, from uh, um, being a uh, quarter of a century. Yeah, it seems like a really long time ago. Okay, so I got a bunch of, I, I pulled like eight, maybe ten albums, and then I got um, some honorable mentions. I'll just ramble through these. Uh, Arcade Fire, The Suburbs, that's, other than their debut, I think that's their best album. Uh, LCD Sound System released uh, This Is Happening. Yeah. Yeah, that's a terrific record. They were just here in Chicago mm-hmm. last weekend. Four sold out freaking nights. I heard it was a blast. Uh, the band Best Coast oh. released their album. Do you, do you remember oh, them? Yeah. I love them. Kind of poppy. I, yeah. I really like them. I don't know. They made some other albums, but I, I, I don't I don't think I liked them all that much. But that, yeah, I think that, they had like one, maybe three. Yeah. And then they kind of just faded. But that first one is great. Uh, Beach House released Teen Dream. I'm not a huge Beach House fan. I get why people like them. They're kind of that dreamy shoegaze, you know. But uh, Teen Dream is really good. I, I like that one. A guy That's named Dax one. Riggs. Uh, Dax Riggs was the lead singer for a band called Dead Boy and Elephant Men. They only made two albums, but his solo album, Say Goodnight to the World, is really good. Bluesy, heavy guitar. Mm. It's mostly him and like a drummer. There's no other, you know, instruments. Um, he may play a couple other instruments, like Dead Boy and Elephant Men. They they were so freaking good. Their debut album is one of my favorites. I might even do that as a review someday. Um, it's it was just him and his girlfriend on drums. You know, kind of similar to the White Stripes kind of sound, but really good record. I, I absolutely loved it. Uh, a band called Radio Department. Uh, I think they're still around. Um, Clinging to a scheme was I. I think it was their debut. Really good band. I want to say they're from Sweden. Could be completely wrong. They might be from Detroit. Uh, A band called (laughs) Caribou. You remember Caribou? Their album Swim. It was kind of poppy. It was kind of a little dancey electronic. I I think one of the songs was kind of big in the clubs, actually, back then. Uh, I really liked that. And uh, a band that used to play all the the festival circuits. And I, I don't know haven't seen them for a few years, but a band called Foles. Really good band. They're still around. They still make uh, great music. Yeah, yeah. Total, total Life Forever, which is probably their best record. They're still around. And if you ever get a chance to see Foles live, they're phenomenal. They, they, they just bring the freaking energy. The lead singer is, first of all, hot. And he's just energy, energy, energy. Uh, the whole freaking show. There's no freaking balance. I mean, he just goes and goes and goes. Really good band. Um, so then I got just a small pile, I promise. Um, click, click, click. Craig probably knows this. Storm, uh, what's it called? Oh, Stormy yeah. Weather? Yeah, yeah, Stormy Weather. Fun, dance, upbeat, electronic, really, really good heard. stuff. Cool band. <laughs> Corey and I were really upset when this band broke up about two years ago. This is Yaysayer. This is their best album. It's called. Oh Lord. yeah. Yeah, remember them? They were great. They broke. They split up mm-hmm. about maybe a year ago, maybe th- two years ago, right before the pandemic. And they were really high energy, fun, uh, very percussionist. A lot of you know rhythms and really high energy. I love them. Um. Mava Staples, the beautiful Mava Staples, You Are Not Alone. Big comeback for her. Um, whole bunch of guests on here. Uh, really good record. Beautiful, beautiful record. Uh, what is this? A band I used to really, really like. Every time they released an album, I was super excited uh, because I loved their lead singer. He, first of all, he's very handsome and he's got a voice that'll make you freaking melt. But now I don't like them as much. I just, there's something about, I don't know, I find them kind of boring, and that's The National. This is, uh, what's it called? Oh, The National. Yeah, Yeah. High Violet. It's probably, everything they do is with Taylor now. Is what? (laughs) I said everything they do is with Taylor now, not everything. They have Taylor, like, on everything. 
Yeah, it's, really? she's been on their last two albums. Yeah, yeah that's a shame. And I'm um, pretty sure that they've produced some of her, the lead singer. What's the lead singer's name? Um, Matthew, Matthew Berenger or Berenger. Yeah. Yeah. He's they're probably done selling a lot more her, albums too. Yeah. They're, they're probably with Taylor Swift. Yeah. Well, yeah. Of course, I mean, yeah. this is probably my favorite of their records. Um, I don't know. I just, something about them has really kind of turned me off. The last they were year. one of the opening acts when I saw uh, REM in 2007. Oh, wow. And uh, so that would have been back in the day yeah. when you liked them. Yeah. 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 They used to be a really exciting band that I, I used to really get excited for their releases. But mm. um, this is a terrific record. This is uh, Philip Selway's uh, Familial. Philip Selway is the drummer for Radiohead. This is a very sparse, just a very sparse record there's not a lot to it the songs are very stripped down and bare uh it's just him singing it's uh, just really good cool artwork I, I this is my favorite of the solo records did we i think we is this i don't remember if this is the one we reviewed but uh john grants the queen of denmark excellent this isn't the one we reviewed. No, we, remember no we, no we did the, started the channel no, he we did, did one uh, where he was sitting at a yeah. table. Yeah, we did uh, Pale Ghost. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Th yeah, I think this Pale is Green the Ghost. This is a wonderful record, too. The same vein yeah. as that that previous record. I love John Grant. He's got a new album coming out in a few weeks, I believe. So, yeah. Queen of Denmark. Yeah. And the last one. This is probably my favorite record of the year. Um, a band called Midlake. They are still around today making music. This is Trials of oh, Man. Yeah. Uh, their song Roscoe is on here, and that's probably their biggest hit. Really good band. They are actually the backup band on Roscoe John Grant's Denmark. Huh? What'd you say? Is that the Roscoe Pico Train? Yes, that's exactly yik, yik, it. Yik, yik, yik. Roscoe Pico Train. Yes. <laughs> Dude, James has a reference. Jesus. <laughs> James Best. And that's it. Yeah, not a great year for music. As we're about to really find out with our bottoms of 2010. Here comes the long lists. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't have a long mm -hmm. list. I don't either. No, Mine has well, problems. actually, you know, yeah, I don't have. Because that's what I want to do. Sit around and listen to music. Yeah, and right. It, yeah. It's, I mean, as I was going through the list of releases, I could see plenty of releases, you know, that I had absolutely no interest in <laughs> that had even. some serious bottom potential <laughs> yeah you didn't want to actually waste but, time. I well right. <laughs> but one that i did actually listen to recently now i'm a huge fan of uh underworld i really love a lot of what they do and a friend of mine lent me some of his uh, underworld records to listen to recently and one of them was a 2010 release. It's the one called Barking. And I really didn't like that one. It was, um, when I listen to Underworld, I am expecting really hardcore techno, um, some deep house style of music. And, and that's what they are really good at with barking they ventured into trance and trance is can get really boring it's really formularic um and it's you know a lot of clubs will play trance because you know it's great for the dance floor or whatever but great for the you know, drugs yeah yeah, I yeah. Like dance floor is great for sitting in the <laughs> hey, corner with christmas lights well, i'm not doing either yeah <laughs> it's uh yeah because yeah you you know that, that's why it's called trance because you you know you can dance your way into a trance with all your ecstasy and all that but oh, it, for is underworld that I, that's, not, uh... that's not what i want from underworld <laughs> that's not what i want from underworld and it was it was a very disappointing <laughs> listen um and so yeah barking mm. is is uh, a dishonorable mention for me for uh 2000. Wow. That's all, that's all I have. Oh wow, just one. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. Well, I've got a little bit of a list here. 
Okay, well, thank you, 2010, <laughs> for bringing us wonderful gifts like Justin Bieber. Thank you. And thank you, Usher, for also bringing us that gift because he is the one that, like, right, right. What did he, he signed him or whatever? Oh, really? It's all Usher's fault. Well, and YouTube's fault because yeah. he was, blew up on YouTube. And then Usher's like, let me get this little kid. And yeah, baby, baby, ooh, shut the fuck up, Justin Bieber. All right. And 2010 also brought us Lana Del Rey. And I wish 2010 would take her away. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. Would have taken her away. I, <laughs> yeah, that shit's terrible. I mean, if I somebody reviewed that. Needs... Yeah, I don't. I reviewed yeah, the top albums of 2023, and I think that was number one on uh, Discogs. Yeah, as it many as it sold, yeah. with the exception of like re mm -hmm. re recorded Taylor Swift. That was like the top and. Wow, is it just so complete? She, first of all, industry plant, and I mean, that phrase gets thrown around a lot, but she truly is, and uh, from what I understand, and just this, let's just act like we're so, it's just horrible. I still remember that stupid lyric. I mean, uh, fuck me till I want to die, fuck me till I want to die. Jesus, that's horrible lyrics. Who is fucking like that? That sounds really. That seems really weird. I don't think she's being sexually Lana assaulted. Del Rey. Right. I think it's. I, I just. She's I so never. Right and she's so. Oh my god. She's so over yeah. it. And yeah. 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 Put them back I on. Just, I just here. never god, understood damn. the allure. Yeah. Never understood the allure of her. Of people like her, more power to you. Whatever. You know, it's funny though. But you know, I do like the one song she did. She did do one song with Stevie Nicks, but that's the Stevie Nicks saved the song. That's the only reason that the song right. is any kind it's of. It's almost good. somewhat offensive but, too to be um, doing that for people who really are depressed. And there's really real artists out there that can really convey that, and and it's real, mm -hmm. and it's what to have yeah. bullshit people like that capitalizing on that. It's yeah. just um, again, people really, really love her, and you can love her, but I don't. So, um, Shakira did a cover of "I'll Stand by You." I I don't think I need to say any more. Like, no. <laughs> first off, it's not a good song. I mean, but but nobody should cover it. And um, Train with their stupid ass "Marry Me." Uh, Brett Michaels had a solo album this year called "Custom Built." That's something to be proud of. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a. Uh, some like UK dance group called Jed Ward or Jed Ward. I don't know. Um, they did a dancey mashup of Under Pressure and Ice Ice Baby featuring oh, wow. Vanilla Ice. Wow, mashup that is. How I mean, clever. Oh, God. That, that must that, have taken I know. seconds well, to put those it, two songs but... together. <laughs> That's giving me a headache just thinking about it. What the hell? But it's featuring Vanilla Ice himself. Okay, that's he owns right both there. those songs. Um, by there's the There's some interesting. He does. He bought how the hell did that under happen? pressure to get out of all of the legal issues with sampling that. It's really pretty clever. He just bought the oh. song, so he owns under pressure. And of course, I, I don't know if he owns Ice Ice Baby or oh, not, wow. but he owns under pressure. He owns the rights to that. Smart move. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is. Mm -hmm. Now he just does like house renovations and stuff like yes, that, right? Um, TV. Okay, Why some interesting like there's um, somebody called Darkest Days. I don't know who this is. Had a song called Porn Star Dancing. I'm, I I. I don't know why we need, I don't know, more songs about porn stars. Um, Violent Soho, Jesus, oh, where did I go? Okay. Jesus Stole My Girlfriend. I don't now, know. And then Larry know. Platt. Now, this almost more, might be a great song. I think we need more tasteful songs about porn. Yeah. I, I know that taste. Oh, taste. Well, no, I don't know that I, I don't know if I want it to be tasteful. I mean, I mean, we definitely, I, I, you know, anything with I don't, porn maybe stars is fine with me. We can do more songs. <laughs> they can dance. They can, but maybe not sing, but yeah, yeah, anything like that's fine. Well, I mean, I guess it can be a little classy, you know, classier for, I don't know. 
Um, yeah, so Lord. Larry Platt, he was, uh, he auditioned for, oh, Tracy Lords is fantastic. Um, anyways, Larry Platt, he was, he auditioned on American Idol, and then this became a single, and, um, he was, like, in his 50s or something, like so he's too old, but he had his song, Pants on the Ground, Pants on the Ground, pants on, looking like a fool with your pants on the ground, and your head Oh, yeah, that's an American right. Idol thing. Yeah, he was yeah. good. That um, sucked. Yeah, 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 but it was released as a single. Novelty type, yeah. Pants yeah. on the ground, looking like a fool with your pants on the ground and your head goes sideways. Yeah. Anyways, but the worst of the worst, the bottom of the list, fucking I, 10 year old Willow Smith with her goddamn, I whip my hair back and forth. 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 I, that's all she fucking says. <laughs> oh my god i hate it that was, she actually that was quite teen years she does now. some good shit now yeah she does yes and she was 10 and now at least she's like i like some of her stuff now yeah it was 14 Haven't years heard ago it. oh my dear i Lord. heard that goddamn Whipping whip my hair goddamn around. fucking hair back and... oh i fucking hate it so much drink I some wine it. drink it some wine me. i have I'm having PTSD. I need to go to therapy. You're having, oh. you're having CPSD. What's CPSD? All right. All right. Just go, think about go, Hanson. Go ahead, Just think Robert about Hanson. Hanson. Oh, yeah, yes. They were thinking, today, uh, but they're thinking about something other than me, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so well, I just yes, have one. That. But it encompasses an, 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 a, multiple albums, mm. definitely multiple songs. Mm. And uh, a few different years, but I think this is one of the peak years for it. And that's anything that has to do with goddamn fucking Glee. Uh, whether it be the TV show, which I really haven't seen. Oh, I've yeah, seen that was going to be or whatever. Yeah. Horrible. Uh, but all these soundtracks and all the goddamn songs and all of the karaoke versions of the songs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. Awful. I mean, it, that's you know, if you're gonna make horrible I music, gonna, that's your own fu that's your own business. Whatever. Don't take fucking song after song after song after song and ruin them with these bullshit versions. God, I'm glad that trend is over. Yeah. And don't stop believing. I don't know what year that came out, but that was the that was the height of it. I, I every time there was karaoke yeah. all year, it was some idiot up there doing the glee version of don't stop believing and then and that's just there was so many songs was ruined by that show hot fucking garbage oh my there god was. And i mean there were it. some that i that kind of liked started. apparently the show now has been reevaluated. uh people are making youtube videos now that have never seen the show before that are watching it now like oh my god this is this is shit this is awful and the Good. teacher's a creep they're finally like, realizing it well that's what happens People get caught up in this shit and they I don't realize, yeah, this there. is just terrible. But yeah, you don't have to ruin every... And, and there was a point where like certain bands... I know the Foo Fighters was one of them where they're like, no, you can't use our songs. And the yeah. producer was like, well, you're not gonna... You know, you don't understand the, the Glee. If you if you don't have a song on Glee, it's not a song. You're not... Your song isn't a... a you know, has it as an on Glee. It's, that's a standard, you know, so you're just trash. Isn't that... Uh, isn't that what's his name? Uh... Dave Grohl? No, not the producer. No, no, no. It's um, I don't know who the fucking. It's the guy. Is. No, it's it's the gay guy who does uh, American Horror Story and shit. He does everything. I can't. I know. He's that. an asshole. Yeah, he does He's everything. A complete asshole. I can't yeah, remember but, what his um, name is, but yeah. Yeah. Wow. But Glee terrible. did bring us Naya Rivera, so I don't. And know unfortunately, that is, but she all died. All I know but... is that you go on Naya, karaoke night. He was Santana. And instead of like She's hearing wild, somebody wild. trying to sing "Don't Stop Believing" off key, yeah, you'd just... get everything sounded like it was in. I was a, a High School Musical because that was the lead-in to Glee. I was all that was my High School Musical well, movies. But yeah, high, everything so. was this like completely desperate sounding kind of mom <laughs> look at me on stage kind of vocal. It just. Don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. Yeah, good voices, though. Terrible. Yes. Terrible. And before somebody and, puts in the comments Amber. again that Robert can't sing, 
Robert is not trying to sing. Obviously, Robert is trying to do an impression of these stupid ass <laughs> glee karaoke things, and I think Robert nailed it. <laughs> By the way, this is one of my bottoms, so obviously it's not good singing. That's starting to get old. Like I impersonate some horrible and that Robert can't sing. I've never seen those comments. I didn't know anybody had ever said that. But. Maybe that's on my own channel, but still. <laughs> Maybe I can't dance. I but, can't uh, dance. That show sucks. Oh, uh, and you know what? Back back in 2010, 20, that, sh that show, you would walk into bars. You would walk yes. into a gay bar, and yeah. it would be on every fucking TV, and the place would be silent. Everyone would just be like, well, I didn't get Watch that it. where I went. I just and got a lot I, of the karaoke and then a lot of the music out. playing on whenever karaoke wasn't on. They'd be playing parts You know, of the like I will admit that I'm a fan of Lowe. Oh, I oh, also I you're gonna say like you're a fan Glee. of Glee. <laughs> I like that I show. watched the Glee. I watched Wait, Richard is a fan of... Oh, I my God. I, well, I will say I haven't watched the show. All I know is the, the residual of that the music and the karaoke and the take every song, no matter what it is and turn it into some treacly goddamn yeah. caterwauling of any, any song. It didn't matter. I'm going to slide it in right to the top. I'm going to slide it in. I'm never going to stop. <gasps> I was waiting <gasps> for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> turning me on Robert. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, me that's out. white snake for mm, the give people me a that tissue. don't. Give <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I, just I don't one. know. I, I mean, I watched the... Technically, and, I just had um, one, too. Naya <laughs> it's just Naya a broad Rivera, spectrum yeah. of songs. So I just had one because it... it I don't know. It, it goes back to the whole... Like, like, first of all, there's a lot of shit. I mean, is I don't need to put Justin Bieber in the bottoms because... I mean, it's assumed, right? It's assumed he's a bottom. <laughs> well, I helped you. So, well, oh, you know, and I, I, Mr. I, Ask Ariana. I think we were just too old for him. <laughs> Ariana, she doesn't have oh. anything to do with Bieber. That'd be oh, Selena I'm Gomez. thinking of uh, what is it, Selena Gomez? Also, about Selena him. Gomez is who was who was with. Don't mess with my confused. Selena Gomez. <laughs> I'm just some of these young singers. You know, I just. I was okay. Yeah, he's just too out. young for us. Go. But the Glee ruined yeah. our our songs. That was the bad thing about Glee yeah. was it was our stuff that they yeah. were fucking with. Well, so my one more, bottom. They did modern stuff too. Okay, your bottom. Give us your bottom. <laughs> my, one bottom. <laughs> my one bottom, which actually. I oh, Mikey, giving it up. Kind of want to take it off my bottom list after I listen to it more. And it's Robert Plant's solo album, oh. The Band of Joy. I guess it's technically Band of Joy. It's it's not good. It's not great. Mm -hmm. I, I I thought it was worse. Because I'm, I'm very weird with his solo shit. There's a lot of his solo stuff I really don't like. I like his more recent stuff, actually. But this, this is the album that has... I think the two songs I really like on it are actually covers. It's got Angel Dance which is an old song. Uh, Los Lobos did it. Uh, it it's, it's a good song. And then it's got um, uh, Satan, Your Kingdom Must Come Down, which I didn't know was on that record. I thought it was on a later one. And that's actually a really good song. The rest of the stuff is it's kind of filler. It's not It's not good Robert Plant. And, and his voice sounds great. But man, other than those two songs, it's really not good. not good. But after listening to it all the way through, it's not horrible so i it's still on my bottom list maybe disappointing maybe a disappointing bottom then there's been a few of those yeah because you're, when we get into the 2010s it's like that's what you're hearing you're not hearing stuff that's forced on you anymore we talked about that right you yeah know, so it's more of like what's a disappointment yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, that's what I was like, saying about Glee. If it was just a bunch of silly pop songs, they would have went in one ear, not the other. But the fact yeah. is they're taking songs... Songs, songs you love yeah, and, and destroying them. Destroying yeah, them, yeah. they did a lot of... Yeah. Well, a lot of the songs but Yeah, they, they, did, they also, like Craig was saying, they, they, they also um, did Katy Perry songs and, and you know, current stuff but yeah, yeah they did no they did pop stuff and stuff like that but yeah they I mean, they did songs that sucked or, or already 
but they also did songs that we also loved, you know, yeah. and yeah. destroyed them. Yeah. Or at least have memories with and have they have a place and just yeah. oh and they, oh god anyway yes those are our bottoms of 2010 my goodness can't wait to see what year we're doing next 2011 2011 <laughs> just kidding oh. <laughs> oh, oh, okay this will make you a little happy and make you feel fancy and fine next time we are doing 1970 four oh okay a lot oh. of uh oh, a lot of, okay. lot of linda ronstadt yeah not on either of my lists that, that would go right in the middle <laughs> that's not good enough to be a top it's not bad enough to be a bottom i guess when will i be loved was okay was that 74 maybe yeah I right don't around know. there yeah love that song it was one the of the cover years. queen linda ronstadt yep Made yes. millions. Yeah. All right. So 1974, <laughs> we'll do the tops and bottoms of that coming up. We're also going to review Craig's uh, choice for the album review, which is Dolly Parton's Bluegrass album, the first of a trilogy called The Grass is Blue. And we also have Richard's playlist battle. He chose B.B. King. That is all coming mm -hmm. up. Hopefully you'll join us for all of it and leave comments of what your tops and bottoms of 2010 were. And how I, we're all wrong about Glee. That would be a great one. Oh, you know that's coming. You know that's coming. Uh, Richard and I aren't. We like so it. So thank, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we are the Vinyl Community Gunkles. I'm Ron <coughs> Fifth and along with... Richard at Calvin Wazoo. Craig's Vinyl Plethora. <laughs> Mike at Hubtoons. We'll talk to you again soon, like next week. Hopefully. Such a dramatic pause, Craig. Wow. <laughs>